gonna stand against the odds. You can feel the heat. It's making or breaking. Try to survive. All the good names are taken podcast and we're back for another Friday, the 13th stream, bringing you all the Friday, the 13th content until we get a movie. And I'm not talking about the streaming series. It's going to be on Peacock. Sorry for the delay, everybody. So let me catch you up to date. One tech issues for the 27th week in a row with Blake. He's got issues at his house right now. He moved the recording studio out to his garage. It actually looked really cool. And if he comes onto the stream, it, it sort of looks like he's broadcasting straight from Jason's shack in part two, but apparently there are issues with his mic. Imagine that. And he's working on it right now. The only problem with that is, and I'll let some of you guys know in the chat, that's been what you guys have been waiting in the chat like angels for the last 20 minutes. And I apologize for that, but I don't know if he'll be here, but I figured let's go ahead and get it started because there's zero contact with him right now. He's not answering text or phone calls. Maybe he was abducted. I don't know. And here's the way I look at it. Even if it's a solo stream, I put a lot of work into this this week, best hair and Friday the 13th. So I don't want to just cancel the stream. Plus, we have like some big plans for in the morning for people that want to wake up early. If we can get Blake's setup working. So real quick to the chat, happy Friday, everybody. Let's start at the top and see who's here. CD scales and models. Chris here should be a fun one. Chris, it was very aggravating. I'll go ahead and say it very aggravating. Cause I feel bad for Blake because he can't get the stuff to work and all I want to do is help, but I suck at it too. Uh, waiting on Blake. Allie says should be a country song. No shit. Uh, Doc Holiday, Jack. Cheers, guys. I'm pretty sure this guy subbed to the channel earlier in the week based off of our uh, Stone Cold review. So welcome aboard. Our boy Nick Push is in the chat. He says he's going to get this started. Best hair in the franchise and worst hair. Go. So... The setup I have today is not a best and worst much as it's just a lot of different hairstyles that I thought were unique. 
good, bad, whatever. And I guess I should go ahead and uh, credit Darren with this idea. He submitted it and said he'd love to see us talk about hairstyles from Sorry 13. Because I'm being completely honest with you guys, it's getting tougher and tougher to get more obscure uh, subjects when it comes to Friday the 13th. Now, we have a list about this long, but uh, eventually we're going to run out and we're going to start talking about ranking the mask and ranking the kills and all that other stuff. The message of the night so far in the chat is, where's Billion Dollar Bud tonight? Uh, Nick being filthy, I'm hoping Ronnie doesn't have some curveball plan where they're, we're not talking pubic hair. We're talking hair on the head. Okay. So Darren says nothing wrong with Shelly's hair. That would have been mine 35 years ago. Darren, if there are photos where you have the Larry David hair, like Shelly, please post them so we can all see Nick push says he would kill for curly hair. Mine goes straight down like cousin it. You may want to do like cousin it does and brush it over your face. Let's see. Going through here, going through here. Yeah, this is a good one right here. Blake's getting like Madonna, having them wait several hours before he makes the stage. Tiger man. What's up, man? Glad you're here. Popping the popcorns in the chat. Hey, Shape of Horror Podcast is in the chat. Hey, bud. Hope everything's going good with you. Darren says, I just want to wish you good luck. We're all routing, not rooting, routing for you. It'll be fine one way or the other, Darren. So really quickly, everybody on YouTube are talking about tomorrow, uh, April the 13th, is the 40th anniversary of Friday 13th, part four of the final chapter. Now, also, everybody on YouTube are doing some type of watch along with Friday the 13th, the final chapter. What I plan to do, or what I plan to do, was just throw uh, our review of the movie up there and tell everybody to enjoy it. But Blake came up with a great idea. He said, everybody is going to be doing a watch along. Why don't we do a watch along too? So plans could change in the morning. We're on central time here in Mississippi, 5 a.m. Central time. Me and Blake tentatively are going to do a watch along for Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter over on rumble. Later in the day, we'll transfer an edited version back over to YouTube. So if you guys want to jump up at the butt crack of dawn on a Saturday morning to watch Friday the 13th part four with us, please do. I'll put the link in, uh, I'll put the link on Twitter X, whatever it's called. And I'll create a post with the link in it for anybody that wants to join us, but it'll be up in an edited version on YouTube later in the day. So really quickly. I just see a bunch of people saying, hey, in the chat, let's get to it. Let me figure out how to work this. I had it set up for me and Blake, and now it's just me. So give me a second. And forgive me if this sucks being a solo stream, guys. There we go. Boom. Hairstyles from Friday the 13th, and I'll be completely honest with you guys let's see what happens when i do this right here when i go here and when i go here nothing all right what about when i go here and i go here it's gonna be the same the exact thing tech issues bud tech issues he'll be here or he won't so let's start friday the 13th part one we're going with Pamela Voorhees. Now, you guys hit me in the chat. You're going to have to help me along here with what hairstyles you thought were the best and what hairstyles you thought were terrible in Friday the 13th Part 1. I'm just going to show hairstyles. Uh, I'll let you guys decide if it's a good hairstyle or it's a bad hairstyle. So here we go. Pamela Voorhees, I looked it up. It's the classic short haircut. And it sort of looks like Charles Bronson from Death Wish. 
I guess you would, you would say right here, it doesn't make her look like she's 78 years old, but I think it suits her. The sweater's working. Uh, it's just enough bangs to cover up part of that Cro-Magnon head. So there you go. Uh, not a terrible hairstyle. And it was like a huge hairstyle in the eighties for women to have their hair that short. I'm not talking Susan powder short, but, uh, not a toll, but tell me in the chat. What do you guys think about that? Uh, Chris already saying Ted Koppel. She's got the Ted Koppel hair. All right, let's, let's stop for a second. For some reason, Bud has decided that he's going to die on the Megan from Friday the 13th part six hill. For some reason, he's talking nuts about. She's not a, a known, she's overrated as a final girl. What Bud doesn't realize in his 27 accounts in the chat here is Megan's not the final girl from Friday the 13th part six. It's Tommy. There's a lot more shit to be worried about. Jim Bob, look right here. Jim Bob's in the chat. My grandma rocked that haircut all the way up to... <laughs> All the way up until she killed my grandpa. Jim Bob, where you been, man? I hadn't seen you in forever. Haven't seen you in forever. All right, we're moving on past Mrs. Voorhees. Jack Burrell. Kevin Bacon. Not a fan of this hairstyle, guys. Not a fan of this hairstyle. It looked a lot better when after post-coitus. Whenever it was slick back, but I mean, people that were, if there's anybody in the chat that was this age during 1980, is this, was this the popular haircut? Because now we just call this sort of like the soup bowl where they cut the bangs and let everything else just grow. All right. Uh, Nick in the chat saying covering the ears looks terrible. I, I've always thought that too, Nick. I thought anytime you let it grow over your ears, you've got to have something like severely wrong with your ears, like pointed ears, big fat ears, whatever. Uh, Allie's saying anybody, hardly anyone can rock that pixie cut. Darren's saying some serious Lego hair. The hair's terrible. The hair is terrible right here. So not one of the best hairstyles. But, I mean, if you think about Kevin Bacon throughout his career, let's think about it. In what movie besides Footloose, and even in Footloose, is he rocking like a actual stylish haircut? I mean, in Tremors, he's got the mullet. It's going to have to be Footloose, where he's got. He, I think that might be the only movie where he has like a stylish haircut. Hey, Pat, welcome aboard. Pat says it looks like a helmet. And I think Pat's exactly right. I mean, I don't know. I, I always wondered why Kevin Bacon was such a heartthrob when he looks so normal. Let's move on. Cause I got a ton of these guys. It's going to take forever. I was kind of hoping just to stop for a second. I was kind of hoping Blake would tr attempt to like log into the chat or log back into the system here. So you guys could see the setup that he had next. We're moving on to Alice Hardy. Not a bad hairstyle. I think it's actually the perfect hairstyle for somebody that looks like Alice Hardy. Alice Hardy is not the best looking final girl you're ever going to run into, but the hair might be the most impressive thing about her. What do you think about it in the chat? Moving on. Steve Christie. And this is uh, what I wanted to spend a little bit of time with. That's the reason I was hoping Blake would be here. Steve Christie would, I don't, I don't know what, you would call this hairstyle right here. It's super curly. It's, it's not receding by any means. It's not thin by any means, but it, <laughs> I'll get to it in a second, but somebody just nailed it, but it, it looks sort of like mop hair. I mean, it, it's crazy. And he manages to pull it off for what you want to say about Steve Christie creep weirdo. Uh, jerk is what Nick and bud were talking about on their stream the other night. He rocked the look pretty good. The glasses, the bandana, the mustache, it shouldn't work, but he pulls, he pulls it off and uh CD said it perfectly. It's the John Holmes haircut. And that's what it is. Uh, that's absolutely old school. John Holmes haircut. 
and Steve Christie's rocking it. Uh, Jim Bob said he got that haircut on Epstein Island. Nick Push says he loves Christie's hair. It's fantastic. Look, as a guy that doesn't have hair, obviously, I love all these hairstyles. I'm going to tell you, I, I love it. And um, Pat agrees. He says it's the John Holmes hairstyle. When I saw Chris say it in the chat, I immediately recognized that <laughs> that is it. Hoops, what's going on, my man? He goes, that's the business. Krusty Christie rocks it. All right. Darren says he looks like a dollar store William Cat. And William Cat looks like a dollar store uh William Cat to be completely honest. William Cat, how was he ever famous? I mean, what about William Cat screams celebrity? He's not the best actor in the world. He's not the best looking guy in the world. He's got like crusty the clown hair in Carrie when that bucket hits it. I mean, how that, that would be a, a, a great conversation. How and why does William Cat deserve to be famous? All right, I lost myself right here. Uh, Pat says, Steve Christie's such a creeper. Uh, Bud says, that's a legend right there. He wanted to make Crystal Lake great again. Let's talk about that. That's a good, that's a good point, Bud. He was just trying to, I'm, I'm assuming his family ran Crystal Lake up until the tragedy. He was just trying to build up his family's business again. He was just trying to get that place good enough that it could operate, make his family proud. Where did he get the $20,000? All right, going through before we go to the next slide. Don't worry, Dave, we're getting there. Don't jump ahead. Don't jump ahead. All right, Hoop says, believe it or not, William Katz, awesome. I don't believe it. Uh, Darren says the greatest American hero. That's why he was famous. Uh, Bud says house does not hold up. Well, I enjoy house. I can see where some people says that, you know, or, or will say it doesn't hold up well, but I grew up with it. So it's going to be one of those movies that, that I always defend, uh, Darren, I've never seen greatest American hero. Let's see what's what's Nick talking about? 10 p.m. Eastern on part one. We're going to bleed into the 5 a.m. stream. No, we're not. I'm going to shoot through these. Shut up, Nick. Here we go. Crazy Ralph. So I was going to uh, pose the question to Blake. What kind of hair do you think Crazy Ralph was rocking underneath that hat? Because I assumed he's rocking like the the horseshoe, the skullet with greasy wet hair from out. You know, everybody's seen the alcoholic that's got the thin wet hair when they take the hat off but i found this picture and it looks like he does have a little bit of hair on top that's also like a, like an annie haircut right there uh <laughs> jim bob says it's phantasm that's exactly what it looks like right there all right so moving on from crazy ralph last one for part one nick we've got jason now if you guys zoom in right here you'll see that we have a little bit of hair on the side of Jason and what looks to be like a stick growing out of his head. Now, if you don't see it, look to the left side of the picture. It looks like there's a stick growing out of the side of his head. It counts as a hairdo. And I'm going to pose this question right now into the chat. Do you prefer your Jason with a little bit of hair or do you prefer your Jason with no hair at all? Let me know. But that'll wrap up part one right there. Let's check it out. Uh, Chris says, Mr. Spacely. He did look like Mr. Spacely. Uh, Bud saying he's giving Peyton Manning a run for his money. That is a massive head right there. Uh, still better hair than Alice. Look, I mean, talking right here, here's Alice's hair. Alice's hair is not bad in this movie, not as bad as her face. Jim Bob's saying big urn, Jason. All right, let's move into part two, people. Friday the 13th, part two, set five years later, we've got Ted. And I know I used one of these pictures last week. I probably should have found new pictures. But Ted, who has totally redeemed himself upon me rewatching these movies, I used to think like he was super uh, annoying, and some of you in the chat may still think he's super annoying. But he's not that bad upon the rewatches, just like Ned from part one, I think it's Ned from part one. He's really not that bad uh, as, as far as the goofball characters go. 
But Ted, I'm going to get it right here. Great hairline, great hairstyle. I'm giving it a thumbs up. What are you guys thinking in the chat? Uh, I think this is Jake. Jake saying, what about Marcy? She had great hair. She did have great hair, Jake, but I couldn't put, I got like 50 slides as it is. I couldn't put everybody, but she did have great hair. Pat saying this photo of Alice always looked like she was squeezing out a fart. Uh, Allie saying she likes no hair. Jason Darren saying Alice hair looks like, uh, Vader's helmet. Let's go. Uh, but uh, Jake says Terry has the best hair. Uh, Chris saying this hair fits Ted. Yeah. Like you really don't see, I mean, I can't see this human being with long hair. I can't see this human being with a shaved head. Uh, people that know horror really well in the chat, let me know is Ted's hair. Is this the same hairstyle that Ted has in, uh, Christine? I think it is. Bud's right on the fact that nobody likes a ginger, but I mean, he can't help that. I mean, he could dye it later on. Uh, Nick's jumping ahead and saying the dude that creeps on Terry has the best hair in this movie. That would be Scott. Let's see. Let's move on. Okay. So Chris is confirming that is the same hairstyle that this actor has in Christine. So he found something he liked and he stuck with it. I'm pretty sure this dude did a uh, McDonald's commercial back in the eighties too. My wife was shaking her head and uh, laughing at me. Uh, because I'm sitting there watching these old eighties cartoons. I don't know how many of you guys grew up in the eighties, but if you go into YouTube, you can find pretty much anything. And, uh, I like to, uh, to bring up the old Saturday morning cartoons and the ones where people have copied on VHSs and have the commercials. And like, here comes Ted out of the McDonald's moving on. We got Paul. He's the head of the counselors. He's the one that makes the rules. He gets Jenny. He uh, squares up with Jason all throughout Friday the 13th, part two. The question's still out there. Did he live? Did he die? It depends on what Reddit uh, forum you're on. I really think he died, but it doesn't make much sense if he died. Because if he died, then how did Jenny get all the way back to the cabin? So, I mean, like I said, tons of uh, questions if you want to go down there. The one on the left, guys, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is like a Seinfeld situation. This is a two-faced situation. On the left, that's pretty good hair, in my opinion. On the right, because this is a good-looking dude. On the right, that's total soup bowl. That's cereal bowl, and we're going to trim the hair around. So I'm wondering if the scene on the right was like a reshoot or, or something like that, because there's no way his hair is doing what it's doing on the left when it's that short as it is on the right. <laughs> uh, Chris says, roll gold pretzels with two with Jason Alexander. Uh, Jim Bob says, that's an effing nice haircut. I agree. The one on the left is a really great haircut. Uh, Chris is saying it's total 80s hairdo. Uh, Bud makes a good point saying it looks like a diehard villain. It really does. Uh, Chris is saying it fits him. It fits him. So, uh, Pat says, uh, Peter Scolari hair from bosom buddies. And I think it's Jake says he's got Lloyd Christmas thing going on. You're absolutely right. Jake on the right side. That's definite Lloyd Christmas moving on guys from Paul. Uh, I've already seen some of you guys mention her in the chat. We've got Terry. Now, why did I choose Terry when it, uh, came to hair? Because her hair is, always up in this movie except for the very end so i'm assuming she has really short hair maybe besides mrs uh Voorhees, the shortest hair in the franchise so far you can see it pulled up on the left and on the right when it's wet and down it doesn't look bad so i'm going to give this a thumbs up right here <laughs> bud being filthy Max, the tow truck driver. We don't know a lot about Max, but he's <laughs> we know he's happy as hell in this picture. He's a jokester, and he may have the best hair in the movie, guys. Take a look. That's the perfect part. It's not too much. It's not too little. We got hair on the sides. He's got it buttoned down all the way to the chest. Looking good. Everybody's hero. And 
Like uh, Chris says, that's working man's hair. That's a real man's haircut right there. Jim Bob said that's Kevin Costner. And Nick asked, is he Ted's dad? Here's a question. Is Ted from Crystal Lake? Because in Friday the 13th Part 2, it's almost like all these guys, all these kids are coming from all over the place to be trained up and certified to be a camp counselor at Crystal Lake. In theory, Ted says he's friends with Jeff and Sandra, says it's just going to be just like old times. But is he working at the garage? Or like uh, Nick just asked, is Max Ted's dad? Which we know he's not because he says, you know, that's my buddy Max. He He's crazy too. Um, I don't know. It's a good character. It's a really good character. I mean, any, another one of these characters that lived. And nobody ever thinks about Max when they watch Friday 13th Part 2. Mark, his legs didn't work, but this haircut sure did. This is this may be better than Max's hair, to be completely honest with you. I was ready to sell it on Max having the best hair in Friday the 13th Part 2. But Mark, this is the perfect hairstyle for that face. This hair is awesome. Is this all right? People that know, because I've been out of the hair game a long time. People that know. Is this feathered bangs? Are these feathered bangs? Is this feathered hair? Or is this just a classic part? Let me know. Oh, hold on, guys. Breaking. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Get this off the screen. I knew it. Hey! Are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear can you. you. Hear <laughs> Where the hell you been? I've been doing this for 20 minutes. Please. <laughs> or do we have a delay? What's going on here? Yeah, I think we got a delay. A little bit of a delay. Okay, tell explain to me your setup right here. What's going on? Uh, how are you watching the show? Are you watching it off YouTube? No, you can't be watching it off YouTube. And I can hear no, me I'm in the background. The so this is a, this is a top notch operation you got going here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's wrong. I, I really don't. So, well, at least I can't hear myself back, but. Are you okay? Are you ready to go? Do you think you can make it or what? I mean, you tell me. I don't know. I don't either. I mean, I just don't understand how hard it is to get this stuff to work. But I don't want to argue in front well, of all these Well, I mean, people. you say that. You you came over and couldn't figure it out. So Not, not with this. I mean, are you, are you telling me every computer, every single computer is messed up? No, it worked fine when we recorded with those two jackasses the other day. Everything worked great. You think it's just because you're out in the garage? I mean, it could be, but it does no no it, it doesn't, Ronnie, because I got my speakers hooked up through this microphone and the speakers yeah. have been working this whole time. <laughs> I was ready to brag about how good it looks behind you. You got the championship belt. You got Hogan. You got Kurt Russell. It looks like you're in Jason Shack. I, I love it. Look, yeah, I'm glad uh, Jason Shack is nicer than where I'm at right now. Look, buddy, I'm so glad that you're here because I was having to talk to the chat, and you know how much I hate them. Yeah, but I love you. Well, I had to move to the garage. There's a sleepover uh, going on, so, uh, you know, it is what it is. Have you seen any of the show yet? Because I've totally killed it. Not in a good way either. I assume I assume you killed it, but no, I haven't seen the show. All right. So you've missed Friday the 13th Part 1, Blake, and we're into Friday the 13th Part 2. I had what I thought was a great joke. I'm going to pull this back up. You ready to go? Sure. 
I had it pulled up. I had a great joke, Blake. I said the haircut worked for Mark, but his legs didn't. And you wasn't here to hear it. What do you think about Mark? <laughs> what do I think about his legs? Not much. His haircut. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's good. It it's not gonna. I think he's gonna go bald pretty early. Uh, trust me, I'm an expert. I know. But uh, yeah, it's good for what it is. Pat says Blake looks like he's in a ransom video at gunpoint. <laughs> Whatever, Pat. Jim Pop says bring out the gimp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm scrolling back through these. Oh, uh, I mean, Chris, listen, if they're gonna be mean, I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> Chris is shit. all over Not tonight. Chris is all over your ass tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Madonna has arrived. Oh, uh, Chris. Oh, he's one of our biggest fans, Blake. He and he supports the channel like no other. Uh, Chris also says like Blake fan. Blake live via satellite from the flea market flip. So they're all having fun with you, Blake. Uh, yeah. Bud, I mean, not Bud. Uh, Nick was, uh, guess guess what happened, Blake? Let's talk about it live. Bud came back into another stream with the Megan gimmick. What do you think's going on there? I don't know. Bud's got a lot going on in his personal life. I uh, just, I don't know. He's going nuts these last couple of weeks. I tried to explain to him that he's wasting his energy on the Megan thing because Tommy's the final girl in that movie anyway. I mean, it starts yeah. and stops with Tommy as the top final girl in Friday the 13th. Bar none. I mean, Ronnie, look, I love Bud, but who gives a shit what he thinks? <laughs> Jim Bob says somebody's hogtied in the corner off screen. Hoops coming in with some low class shit right here. If any two men are qualified to judge hair, oh, he did the winky face. I apologize for getting aggravated. My bad. Uh, Chris wants to know where the toilet is, Blake. I'm sitting on it. Oh, uh, Hoops also says nice Hogan doll. Back to the thing right here, Blake. Uh, Mark's hair. Thumbs up or thumbs down? That's how we're doing it, Blake. We'll just talk uh, about thumbs whether up for me. It's, yeah, it's, it's great hair. If I had hair, I would brush it exactly like Mark. Part two, Blake. We've got our man Scott. He's got the <laughs> wink. He's got the slingshot. And you've got to have a ton of confidence back in the 80s to be 35 years they old don't. and uh, have a slingshot. So... I kind of froze up right there. I don't know where I was going with that point, but great hair right I here. Thought you, I thought my laptop froze up. <laughs> <laughs> great yeah, hair uh, right here. Me and Nick Push have texted privately and said that this is the sexiest guy in the entire franchise, uh, without a doubt. And you're right. He may have the best head of hair. I think uh, at the end of uh, the 200 slides you, you've, you've done up, Ronnie, we should vote uh, who had the best hair. Uh, Spoiler alert, well, I'm choosing I'm, Scott. Uh, it's not going to be Scott. Look, I know a lot about hair. Look at that picture. Oh, hi. Did you talk about my hair? <laughs> that hair? No. <laughs> You're not Steve Christie's hair? So real quick, Blake. I mean, you got talking. You got Mark on the screen. Mark, what are you talking about? Scott's on the screen. Everybody in the chat. If you looked at the picture to the left, I know a lot about hair. This guy's ball headed now. I don't know what he looks like in 2024, but I know for a fact that's hair that's going to fall out. Now I could be completely uh, completely wrong. In the chat, let me know. In the chat, let me know if this guy still has hair. But I guarantee you he's bald headed because you can look at how this hair fluffs up in that left pick on that part. He has thin hair. Guaranteed he's bald as F right now. I doubt Boom. that. He's, he started in Boom. Money. 
He really is bald, Ronnie. You're right. I told you. You can look at the left of that pitcher right there. The left pitcher is all you need to know. It, the way it's humped over, that's the way my hair used to be, and I lost every damn bit of it. Uh, Chris says he has short gray flat top, very thin. He's bald. Moving on, Blake. Deputy Winslow. We talked about him a little bit last week. He's got what we would call the bedhead supreme. I mean, it's going every which way. You've got uh, like a little curve this way in the part across. And it looks like if you're paying attention in multiple scenes, his hair may have been parted different ways. On the right, it looks like it's parted to his left. On the left picture right here, it looks like he's parted to his right. Is it possible that his hair was parted two different ways in this scene in, in Friday 13 Part 2? Well, I don't think it's fair to judge his hair by these two pictures you got because he has just got done chasing Jason through the woods and another fun fact you pointed out Ronnie this is the only character in the entire franchise to chase Jason but yeah Deputy Winslow has a, an incredible head of hair it's a good head of hair but I'm also gonna try to you know Bud has a good point right here it does kind of look like a hair piece I don't think it was but it does have that hair piece look to it. I think we should factor in age too when we're judging this because he's got this set of hair in his fifties. Oh man, it was nineteen eighty one. He could have been twenty eight years old. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he might just have a bunch of kids. <laughs> Moving on, Blake. The last one from Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. We've got Jason. Jason's hair. Uh, one side, uh, he probably could do better. The other side looks like a combo. Would you call that gingerish color hair, Blake? Can you tell? Uh, there's some, there's definite red velvet cake in there, Ronnie. <laughs> so what, a wonderful feeling it must be to wake up every morning, put on your overalls and your flannel and brush one side of your head. That's awful. Awful, awful, awful. Blake, I posed a question to the chat earlier. Do you prefer your Jason bald or with a little bit of hair? Uh, I like bald Jason. Allie says she Any just more, pulled up Russell questions? Todd and he ain't bald. So Chris says classic mountain yeah. man hair. I know a lot of mountain men that would uh, try to whip you over that. Uh, Bud said, where the hell did Jason go? Ooh, where the hell did Jason go between this and the beginning of Friday the 13th part three? So obviously Bud doesn't know where he went in those few hours was to Harold's house to change clothes. Yeah. Uh, and the stress of everything that happened. I'm sure a lot of it fell out. There you go. Uh, Hoop says he should brush that over. Nick's here. Welcome aboard, Nick. Hey, everyone. He kind of looks like the simply red singer blake do you get that uh no uh pat is saying the picture on the left looks like roy munson hair pat who are you alfred einstein classic but believe it or not bud in the novelization they do talk about him shaving his head i'm not i've never read the book but i just assume it's in there Pat's always reading those books on his channel, so <laughs> he can tell you. All right, moving into part three, Blake. We got Chris Higgins. This is the best hair in the franchise. I'm calling it right now. I disagree. Now. I disagree. There won't, there won't be another better head of hair. That head of hair right there screams 80s, and it's great. She doesn't even have the best hair in this movie, in her, in her particular movie, Ronnie. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, you'll have to tell me after we get through with these slides who had better hair than Chris Higgins in Friday 13th Part 3. Hey, chat, tell me, what do you think about Chris Higgins in Friday 13th Part 3? How do you like her hair? And I'll come back to it in just a second. Jake says she's hot, and Chris says it's so 80s. It's really the, the sun going through her hair. Uh, 
and then Chris is going to ruin it. Reminds me a bit of Demi Lovato. Who was that, Blake? Uh, she was married to Ashton Kutcher. There you go. Makes sense now. Uh, Nick says it looks good. <laughs> Pat says Shelly's Afro was the best. Pat's always jumping ahead, doing his own gimmick. Fortunately, I didn't put Shelly's hair on here. Blake, the background. Hold on. We'll come back to this. I think this could be like your regular Saturday night thing. You think like so? Steve said, like Steve said in Roadhouse. My dog is uh, licking his balls right here in front of me, so I don't think it's going to last. Quit it. I'm next. <laughs> Moving on, Blake. Hey, how about you didn't even comment, brother, on the new Bret Hart shades? I can't see them, Blake. We can barely see you. You're you want 50... me to move the webcam closer? No, stay. I, I like the shot, but I can't see any. I mean, I didn't even know you was wearing glasses. Oh. To be completely honest with you, I see them now. Those Bret Hart shades? Bret. Oh, yeah, they look fantastic. The Hitman Hart. Are you gonna give it? Are you gonna give them to somebody at the end of the stream? God, are we doing that gimmick? Well, I mean, you could. You ain't got to. I so, really want to keep these for myself. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants them. The reason I brought up Chris Higgins' hair and how good it looked is because this is the wig they had for Chris at the end of the movie, the alternate ending that we never saw, where Jason comes out and chops her head off to end Friday the 13th Part 3. Look at that. That hair. looks like somebody we know. Which one? Jason? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's in the hospital. All right, moving on. Rick Blake. This is my pick, Ronnie. Don't take into account that he's a puss, that he's, that he's picking up hay bales. I have a theory fight, on that. He can't fight off Jason. We're just talking about hair, and that's a good head of hair. You're you're right. That's a good head of hair. This this dude looks like he could be on the cover. He he could be like the paper towel guy. You know what I'm talking about? The brawny guy. The brawny guy. He like he like he has got a great head of hair. He's rocking the flannel. He's jacked. He's 47 years old. I love him. I get older. They say they stay the same age. I keep getting older. Higgins Haven stays the same age. Uh, Nick talking about the last picture where we showed the alternate ending, the Friday 13th part three, he said that looks more like Chili's hair and he's absolutely right, but it's not. Yeah. Chili. Uh, quick, quick glance. I thought that was Chili. It was Chris. He comes out and he chops Chris head off at the end of the movie. Uh, Would Chris is also better? saying, well, Blake, I, I really don't know. The way they go from part three to part four, I think, is is really perfect. The way part four picks up right after the events of part three. And I, I know everybody knows that. But Jason laying in a barn with an axe buried into his skull, still laying there over to the side dead when part four picks up, I think that's way better than Jason winning at the end of part three. So, no, I don't think it would have been better. And plus, I think there was an, another alternate ending. I'm sure I'm, I could be wrong. Let me know in the chat. But I think there's one where Chris and Ali both escape the barn and run off uh, together at the end of the movie, not to get married or anything, but, you know, just to escape. Uh, Pat says that Rick is a 1980s Sears catalog uh, model. I don't know if he's... Uh, Serious about that, but that would be awesome. But anyway, Rick's got great hair, Blake. Uh, I would love to have hair like Rick. Yeah, I would too. Moving on. Shelly Finkelstein, Stein, whatever. This is the Larry David, uh, except Larry didn't have any hair in the front. This hairstyle is pathetic. And I think Darren earlier in the stream, Blake, was talking about this was his hair from the 80s. So picture a skinnier Shelly. Picture Darren's face right there where Shelly's is and him sneaking into the back roads to buy horror movies from uh, video nasty dealers in England. 
Guys in the chat, anybody have Photoshop skills, please put Darren's face on that photo to the left and tag me on Twitter, please. Please, please, please. Uh, Chris says Juan Epstein. Uh, Jim Bob says great hair, but runs like Steven Seagal. It's because his pants were so tight, Jim. Uh, Hoop says, boom, that's epic hair. It's not epic hair. This is what a loser looks like, people. And if you see him today in 2024, he still looks like a loser. I want to guide all of you guys to Never Hike Alone Part 2, where, spoiler alert, our boy here makes a little cameo at the end, and he still looks like a geek, Blake. I don't care if he's a lawyer or not. He's like one Moving of the on. biggest uh, defenders of Friday the 13th. No. Say it again. I said he's like uh, one of the biggest supporters slash defenders of this whole Friday the 13th uh, thing. I think what you mean to say is he tweets a lot about uh, the lawsuit that goes on. If he was a big defender, he would uh, be helping with the writing. Loco, Blake. You know, at first you want to say it's not a good look, but don't that kind of look like Patrick Swayze on the right? Sort of. With the cigarette hanging out of his mouth like that, Swayze was known to have a little cigarette hanging out. What I noticed, Blake, was if you look at the left picture, it's kind of deceiving because it looks like he's got the severe widow's peak going straight yeah. back right there. Sort of looks like uh, Drum Dumb's hairdo. And then you look over to the right, and it looks like it's got a little bit more thickness to it. Might be a better uh, wig they put on him for the movie. I don't know. But this is not bad hair. You're, you're going to hear me say all throughout all these slides, hey, that's not bad hair because I don't have any hair. Hey, Fox had good hair, Ronnie. Fox did have good hair, but I didn't put it on there because, I mean, it's just curly. Who gives a shit? Uh, Jim Bob said it looks like Swayze's hair now. <laughs> <laughs> Nick says uh he'd say the hair looks more like Billy Zane, which I've you know, besides Back to the Future and Phantom uh, Cr Critters, did he have hair in the Phantom? Uh he was purple in the Phantom. I don't know. I mean, and there was a wig in Titanic, obviously. I mean, Billy Zane's one of those guys. He looks good with hair, without hair. I don't know. Allie says, I'd like to say the meth head down the street. Was a wig? What, in Titanic? Definitely a yeah. wig in Titanic. Billy Zane's wearing. No, it was not. Uh, somebody in the chat find out if Billy Zane was wearing a wig in Titanic. I guarantee he was. Moving on, Blake. We're still in part three. And I'm coughing. Harold, terrible home life. Terrible lot in life, and unfortunately, I've seen better hair on a hamburger. Yeah, uh, I love Harold, the character, but as far as hair goes, he's toward the bottom. <laughs> Bud with a good comment. He's saying, welcome back, Cotter. I mean, but I get, you know, I can defend him. He's doing the best he can with his hair, Blake, and this hair hung around a while because in the late 80s, he he still hung on to the hair and was doing Married with Children episodes. It yeah. looks it looks worse here than it does later on when he's got the full Bozo the Clown hairdo working. The mustache does make it better, though, right? You agree with that? I don't know. Uh, Chris goes bad hair, epic cleft lip. So I didn't know I didn't know he was hair lip. Hmm. Who knows? What is that shit on his chin? <laughs> That's his, uh, Jesse the Body Ventura dimple. I, oh, is that a dimple or is that hair? Or is that a flavor saver? That's, <laughs> That's a dimple. Oh. Uh, That's cute. Oh, yeah. All right, moving into part four, Blake. We got Tracy Jarvis. I hate her. Why? 
I don't know. I just never liked the character. And I know I shouldn't base her hair off uh, how I feel about the character, but uh, I do like the wet look in the rain. I like that. It reminds me of Cinemax. But, I, I mean, I think it'd be toward the bottom for me on the female hair. Well, look, if you look at her to the to the left right there, it looks like the hair of like an 80-year-old woman. I mean, it looks like... Ah, uh, what movie was that? Was that uh, Indiana Jones and uh, what was the third one? What was the third one called? Can't remember. It's the best one, and I can't remember it. I went blank here. Nick, what's the third uh, Indiana Jones called? Help me out. Uh, so the Temple of Doom. No, it's not Temple of Doom. It's uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. No, it's not Rise of the... Almost, but not there. Last Crusade. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Not the Nick I was talking about either. This Nick. We may have to actually review Top Secret now because he saved me right there. Now everybody's going to come in with Last Crusade. But there's a scene at the end of Last Crusade, spoiler alert, where he drinks from the bad guy, drinks from the wrong cup. And like the hair, like he, he starts to die and his hair comes out and it's all gray. It looks the way Mrs. Voorhees is looks. Uh, Mrs. Jarvis looks right here to the left. You know what I always thought? You you remember uh, Psycho's mom, how she looked when she was like a skeleton in that chair in the reveal yes. at the end? I feel like this is what she would have looked like when she was alive. I think you're right. How old do you think Mrs. Jarvis is? Because this picture to the left right here, she looks like she's 70 years old. Well, she has, uh, Trish is 17, 18, Ronnie. Yeah. Tommy is 9, 10, 11. Yeah. She's probably in her 70s. Uh, Chris says 55. I would think she's in her 70s, too. She had those kids late. And that's the reason she moved out to the woods so she could kill them. All right, well, so you're a thumbs up or a thumbs down on Mrs. Uh, Jarvis's hair? In the chat, let me know. Thumbs up. Or thumbs down for Mrs. Jarvis's hair. I'm gonna give the broad a break. Thumbs up. I don't like it. I really don't like it. All right, Chris you got me into it. I'm thumbs down. <laughs> Chris is saying she does look old. She could be 70. Moving on, we got her daughter Trish Jarvis Blake, and once again we've got the oh yeah, we've got the definition of 80s hair. I may love her, Ronnie. A lot of people are giving the thumbs down in the chat. All right. We're now we're talking about Trish. Y'all give us the thumbs up or the thumbs down for Trish. I like Trish's hair. I mean, it's not the best hairstyle in the world. Uh, but I mean, she wears it. You wear that hair, girl. I mean, it looks okay. Yeah, you're wearing that dress. Do you think she's a natural blonde? Uh Blake, uh, I would not know. I mean, where would they get blonde uh dye hair dye and that far deep into the woods you hear what rob says i didn't nobody i didn't know anybody lived this deep in the woods yeah that's true only one way to uh, find nick's, out, giving right? a, <laughs> nick's giving a thumbs up jim bob is saying this is the best final girl of the series thumbs up chris is saying too curly and permy the pick on the right is better hoops is giving it a thumbs up that's true but saying mrs jarvis is 82 years old for real uh ali saying no it looks died uh let's see right here chris is saying dark brown <laughs> i'm not i can't believe i clicked on that all right we just got a bunch of filth in here now about the the drapes blake moving on from trish we got the two hairstyles of Tommy Jarvis, Blake. On the left, cute kid. On Guess the which right, one's better? <laughs> on the right, you got Corey Feldman's mindset for today. So, uh, on the left, that's what, you know, when you think of the, the child Tommy Jarvis on the left. Look, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. When I think about Corey Feldman, I picture what you see on the left. Then I picture license to drive Corey Feldman. Then I picture the burbs, Corey Feldman. And in my mind, I like to pretend 
that Corey Feldman died after he filmed the burbs. That way he didn't go on to embarrass himself by dressing like Michael Jackson and all that other stuff. So that's how I like to live my life, Blake. You really pretend like that? Yeah, I mean, he died after the burbs. That way he never got yeah, molested. On the left, that's I mean, a, I don't know. that's an iconic cut. Uh, you know, classic salad bowl. Put it on top, trim it around the edges, and there you go. You're done. That'll be eight dollars. Jim Bob said he Michael Jackson liked the one on the left. Nick Push wants to know did he Sammy Sosa his skin? That's a good point, Nick. He's got a great complexion on the left side. And on the right side, he is super pale. I wish uh, I had something to compare that to. It's like powder. Look at that hair. That's awful. Powder. Really bad hair. Anyway, moving on, Blake. Moving on to, well, hold on. I have screwed what up. What are you doing here? I have screwed up a slide, Blake. This should be, this should say Rob. Obviously, it says Hitchhiker. This is Rob. Rob's got awesome hair. I mean, if you look to the right, right there, you're not missing any. That's a perfect hairline. And you look to the left after it got wet. Wet hair is a perfect way to know if hair is thinning. He's got the Elvis curl, guys. That's the I, peak I'm hair for a man. for a minute, Ronnie. Technically, he is a hitchhiker. They did pick him up. Uh, on the side of the road after it fixed solenoid. That's true, but you want to you want you want to peek behind the curtain and see how the sausage is made. When I was making this slide, I noticed that I forgot to save Rob's slide right here, so I had to just keep hitting undo after I did the hitchhiker, and I forgot to change the name. It happens, guys, when you're doing this. So. Let's stop for a second and see what they're talking about in the chat. What you did you find? Did you say anything, Blake, about uh, his hair, whether it was good or not? Uh, no, I didn't. Do you, would you like me to contribute? You can. Uh, Bud says Tommy looks like an ass clown either way. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Blake. Push. Uh, this could be the best looking guy in the franchise, and nobody ever talks about him. He's got great hair. I mean, he's just downvoted because of how much he turns into a puss when Jason shows up. But uh, I mean, look, great hair, tall. When buff. we yeah, when we initially see him, I mean, it's Stud City. Yeah. You think he's gonna? You think he's gonna come in that house and get everybody pregnant? But uh, yeah. when he's faced with adversity, I mean, when he hears Paul getting his D ripped off, he is scared by his tent and he goes walking into the woods and then he hears something back at his tent and he hides and he sees something walking off, which is obviously Jason and Jason has destroyed his gun. So from that point, he's freaked that. out. What? Well, I mean, it could have been somebody else in the woods. It could have been Abel. Uh, who knows? Let's see. Could Let me scroll down. <laughs> Let's see. Bud says Rob probably uh hitchhike two Friday remake rip this plot line off. Uh, Chris is saying not a fan, but it works for Rob. I mean, you know, I like it. Let's see. Nick uh, is saying he looks like Matthew Broderick a little bit on the pick in the right. He sort of does. If Matthew Broderick had any testosterone. Let's see. Uh, Davy Deathray says he looks like Dean Kane's older brother. <laughs> Jim Bob says Dean Duffy. So, real quick in the chat, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on Rob's hair as we move on to my favorite, the hitchhiker, Blake. And there you know, she Ronnie, is. I, I want to say something, and you're going to disagree because you hate women, but we go to Shelly's defense all the time. They call him fat. They make fun of him. Uh, when in actuality, he's not that big, right? Yeah, he's not. He's, and, he's and Hollywood he, fat. Right. And now you got this hitchhiker, and she's fat as hell. Is she? She's smaller than Shelly. It's not the weight that's the issue, Blake. It's the height. She's like four foot eight. Oh, you think that's what it is? Yeah. Like Seinfeld says, you just need a little height. 
it's a proportion thing, right? Yeah. So this hair here is classic motorcycle helmet hair. You know, the motorcycle helmet, Blake, where you can raise the thing up right here. It's like the old eighties four wheeler helmet. They yeah, cut I it, saw it right. in stone cold. He raises it up and there's a head in there. Yeah. They cut it right here for the opening of the helmet. And then they say, okay, honey, go back to your room. This hair is terrible. The headband, for some reason, in the second, in the middle picture, makes me think that it might be a hair piece, Blake. I was really laughing when I made this. Everybody was looking at me like I was stupid. But when you look like this, do you think, hey, a headband, a Rambo headband is really going to make me look that much better? Yeah. Chris is saying it's uh, Roseanne Barr. He's saying it's dreadful hair, boys. Uh, Jim Bob is saying she had hair with the Kung Fu bandana grip and the bandana. Our boys here, Blake, it's Chris Fantasy. Did you know in the movie Hitchhiker? <laughs> did you know in the movie The Hitchhiker, C. Thomas Howell was also the star of Soul Man? There you go. Just for you, Chris. <laughs> Blake, did you know like Chris has been a member of our channel for 12 months? Can I stop this for a second, Blake? Uh, you wasn't here to see the new intro, but one of the most impressive things is our boy Brett over on Patreon has been a member since 2018, Blake. Wow. Did we, uh, were we even putting out content to 2018? Yeah, he was. He's been an original OG Patreon member since the audio only days, and I decided I was going to put the months up that that he has been supporting this channel, and we were like talking so much. We were talking so fondly about Darren and everybody else last week that support the channel, and we left out the guy that's been supporting our channel the most, which is Brett. So we hope Brett's okay. We hope everything's going good with him. Thank you for supporting the channel. Keep the checks coming, Brett. Because that's really all, that's really all that matters in the big scheme of things. He's from Kansas City, if I remember. Kansas right. City, so he's probably happy about the Royals right now. Yep. And it wouldn't be a Friday the Thirteenth Part Four discussion, Blake, without me having to bring up the fact that this poor girl had to answer an ad or you know a call in about be the fat slob hitchhiker. So I do it in a heartbeat. Okay, look at that middle picture, Blake. The reason I put it there, what kind of shit she got there? It's like a mountain of stuff. What is that? I don't know, man. I'm focusing on them tetes on the right. Never noticed Edit. that before, man. Edit. Stop it. So, what? I mean, where do you think she's trying to go? This Okay, Vincent Dasani was on his channel I earlier. Talking, he needs to. Vincent Dasani needs his next movie needs to be focused on the hitchhiker from part four. He needs to do a prequel movie. Y'all need to start donating to that Indiegogo right now. He's going to tell us the backstory of this chick right here. And it's going to be like Forrest Gump. Like she's done like historically good things. And then she stops for a second to eat a banana and uh, Jason kills her. Uh oh, Blake. Are you ready for this? Uh, sure. We got a super chat. Wow, fantastic! You can't be doing this, man. You're getting married. You save your money, dude. Are you? Which one do you want, Blake? It doesn't matter. Way to go, dude! <laughs> So, Fantasy donates $2. Thank you, Chris. You're a channel member. You do not have to do this. And like Blake said, you're getting married. You're going to need every single dollar. He said, Blake, in my house, I heard the crowd from WrestleMania 40. How, so awesome, how awesome was that? Okay. So, moving on. <laughs> We're moving into part five, Blake. We got Joey Burns. Now, Ronnie, for a long time, this was one of our favorite characters. Yes. We, called him, we called him Retarded Joey, and we can do that. It's okay for us dad, to do that. Yeah, our right. dad's retarded. We, 
our dads are, you know, retarded and gay. Um, <laughs> this guy, Ronnie, turned out to be a bad person in real life. I mean, and, yes. Child molester? Yes. yes. Yeah, they, they all are. Um, so I'm going to say he has a shit haircut and uh, he's a real jerk. Uh, jerk store called. Hey, Violet. Hey, Vic. Hi, guys. Hi. Dominic Brazia or something like that. What are you that doing? Is his name. He directed a movie called Evil Laugh that I can't yeah. find anywhere. Remind me, Blake, put that in the notes. We got to get Harper on finding us an illegal copy of Evil Laugh, and we'll review it during 31 Days of Horror in October. Okay, I'll do that. Who's got better hair, Joey? Or Shelly in the chat, let us know. If oh you had man, to, that's a runaway poll. Shelly, Ronnie. Shelly has better hair than Joey. I don't think so. Joey's hair is under the radar right here. If you look at it, I mean, it's good no, hair. No, you're talking about like eventually going bald and stuff. This dude yeah. has like five years minimum from well, this bitch. point. Uh, Bud says he's got a copy of, uh, hold on, let me scroll up. I, I am not good at, can, we got to hire somebody to do this chat. Bud says he has evil laugh. He's going to send it to me. No, thanks. Uh, Jim Bob says Shelly. Allie says Shelly. Chris well, I thought he was going to get Shelley. the address, Ronnie. Yeah, Shelly all day. Uh, Nick says Shelly. And Fantasy says Bud has better hair. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it is Shelly. Shelly's got the better hair. Shelly's the better uh, catch. If you're going to have to go to bed with one person, would it be retarded Joey or would it be Shelly? Shelly, you saw that cake when he was running away from behind? That is true. Moving on, Blake. Hey, thumbs up in the chat, guys. Thumbs up or thumbs down for retarded Joey Burns on his hairstyle. Thumbs down for this pedophile piece of trash. Moving on to Victor. Victor Faden, Fadden, what is this? Uh, Faden. Faden, let's go with Faden. So, he's one of mine and Blake's <laughs> favorite. <laughs> oh, boys. So, anytime Ronnie mentions this guy from, from Friday the 13th or from Return of Living Dead, I always make a point to say, and from The Price is Right. And the fact that Ronnie went out and found the clip of him on Price is Right just for me is fantastic. That's why I love you, brother. <laughs> well, look, in, in Return of the Living <laughs> Dead, <laughs> in Return of the Living Dead, he's got a mohawk. Yeah. So you really can't tell what we're dealing with there hair-wise because it's all about the hairline, guys. It's all about the thickness. It's all about the consistency. This haircut, and I know he died of AIDS. This haircut doesn't suit him. It doesn't look right on him, on the left, Blake. On the right, when he's with Bob Barker and he's got normal hair and he's just barely on coke, allegedly. I mean, I like that hairdo a little bit better. But I think this might be one of the rare individuals that looks better with a punk haircut, Blake. Well, he also might be one of the rare guys that can pull off anything because we know him and love him. (laughs) 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 I love the Mohawk and suicide uh, as suicide in return of living dead. He's got, he's got the good, you know, Brady bunch hair on the right there. Price is right. Ronnie. I think he pulls off that flat top look too. It might just be because he's sweated down. He's a great actor. He's one of the most underrated actors uh, in horror because he's got yeah, two right. of the most memorable characters. He's the guy that chops up retarded Joey, and he's yep. the guy that says the F word like 37 times in five minutes of screen time in Return of the Living Dead. He's the best. I ain't sitting here two F and hours. You're right. Uh, you know, Bud and everybody else wants to argue about overrated, underrated. This guy right here, underrated, not talked about enough. Well, there you go. Let me scroll up just a little bit, Blake. Hey, Ronnie, this garage is getting kind of cold. All right. You ready to, you ready to end it? 
No, I'm just saying. Let's uh, push it real good. <laughs> Hold on, we will. Wrong one. Moving on. Hey, real quick, you guys should know the drill by now. After we leave a character, you got wow, Blake. Look at this. It's go so time. He's, now he's just um, blowing money. Uh, he he's not a listener. Two dollar super chat from Chris Fantasy. Come on, hit me with your best video. You want the best video? Does he want the best video, Blake? He asked me. Somebody say hey. That's the best video. Here we go. You guys know what to do. Hit us with a thumbs up or a thumbs down in the chat when we're talking about uh, Victor Faden from Friday 13th Part 5. Uh, the red herring, everybody thought he might be the killer. But really, did we? Because the whole time, no. the whole movie, the whole movie, we think it's Jason. Yeah, and not until the, the internet, was. not till the internet come out and, and like told us that his name was on the wall, the shit house that Demon is in, you know, I mean, that theory, I don't think, got created until then. Why do you think they went? They put all these, like, Easter eggs in these movies back in, like, the the 80s when they knew, way before they knew, you know, DVD was going to be a thing and Blu-ray and 4K. I mean, are they just doing it for their own fun in case one yeah. day somebody sees it on a VHS? Yeah, it's, it's just fun. All right, moving on, Blake. We got Tommy Jarvis, the religious Tommy Jarvis from Friday the 13th Part 5. Thin. I bet he's ball headed right now. Yeah, uh, not a fan of this 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 uh, hairstyle here um, or this actor. <laughs> don't, don't. No, don't. He has sixteen words in the movie total. Um, it's thumbs down for me. It's a no for me, dog. Uh, me too. Uh, we're gonna move on from Tommy Jarvis. He's terrible. To Raymond Joffrey Blake. He's the guy that hadn't ate in two days. I just want to fill my belly. And she tells him to go clean the chicken shit out of the chicken coop. This is not a good hairstyle right here, Blake. This is this okay. is a definite thumbs down. Okay, like, but let's take into context though, Ronnie. My man hadn't ate in two days, which by the way, ain't that hard. He's had a hard life. He obviously sleeps outside. Um, <laughs> no product no in that hair? No telling how long it's been since we've had water and soap, and the hair still looks like that. So I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm tweener on this um, because that hair should be falling out. It should look like uh, Corey Feldman's did after he shaved it. <laughs> I love that I chose the photo too of when he's being a peeping tom. It looks like somebody's also folded his nose over. Look at that big indention right there. Somebody's definitely hit him in the beak at one point and broke that bridge. Well, not everybody is as nice as Ethel. So, yeah, I mean, you knock on the wrong door and you get popped. <laughs> uh, Blake, our boy Nick with the super chat, and he wants to know where is the ABBA-inspired super chat clip he says is his fave. So, just thanks, for him. Money, money, money. So thanks for the two dollars, Nick. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. We really thanks, appreciate guys. it. Yeah, I don't have to. Thank do you, that. thank you, thank you. So Raymond Joffrey, what are we seeing in the chat? Chris says it fits him, but I don't like it. <laughs> All right, let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, Bud said it looks like Nick Push in ten years. Uh, a lot of thumbs uh, down. That's not true. No, Nick. Look. Everybody likes to give Nick Push crap except for me and you, Blake, because we know his worth. Nick Push has awesome hair. Nick Push has yeah. boy band hair. He's got, like, rock star hair. I mean, not many people can wear their hair like Nick Push wears their hair, and he owns it. That dude's got celebrity hair. And he hair. hides it, too. That's the, that's the crazy thing. 
Yeah, the fact that he gets on his channel and he puts that damn hat over that beautiful head of hair. If he showed that hair, he'd have 750,000 subs. These women would be like back in cheeks up to the computer monitor, yeah. you know, just to try to get his attention. He's a great looking guy. Davey Deathray says it's dreadful hair. It's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> Chris says it looks like he sleeps in Blake's garage. He don't know shit. <laughs> Uh, Fantasy says, Blake, he's just an old school punk rocker. Uh, Chris says, that's Artie Lang. <laughs> it does look like Artie Lang a little bit. Uh, Jim Bob says, that guy definitely makes meth on the ga- on Gatorade bottles. And Nick is actually <laughs> insulting me enough to tell me which one he wanted. I, look, Nick, next time you got to donate $50, and I'm going to give you what I want you to give. But thanks, Nick. Hit it, hit it with him one more time, Ronnie. You want one more time for him? One more time for Nick. All right. Money, money, money. Must be funny. All right, moving on, Blake, because we're going to be here all damn night. Demon, uh, I don't know where everybody in the chat is from, but in Mississippi, we call this a brullet because it's a brother with a mullet. It's a great head of hair. Miguel Nunez Jr., another underrated actor from the 80s and the 90s, really. He's great. He didn't yeah. get his comeuppance until Joanna Man. He was great in life. This is this is awesome yeah. hair. It is, and it's juicy as hell. It reminds me of Daryl from Coming to America. Um, this is a thumbs up for me. Um, I don't want to touch it, but it is a nice head of hair. Well, yeah. I mean, what the hell you got in your hair, boy? Uh, this is nothing but act. This ain't nothing but ultra perm. So there you go, Demon. Thumbs up, thumbs down in the chat, guys. I'm giving it a thumbs up. That hair is perfect. Billy, Blake, eat your soup. This is some awful hair, but I mean, but is it? I mean, he knows his physical limitations. He knows what he looks like. So that's why he always brings Coke on dates to lure the Coke heads in. And again, Ronnie, I'm going to bring it up. Does this mustache help him out? It's a good mustache. Not everybody can wear a mustache. Whenever I try to do the mustache gimmick, it looks like I have a hair lip and I don't have a hair lip. So the mustache works for certain people, uh, certain people it don't. And for this pervert, the mustache works because you spend most of your time staring at the mustache rather than whatever the hell it is on top of his head. Are we looking at another chin dimple here, Ronnie? That's definitely another chin dimple, Blake. They're all like Ventura. Jim Bob says there's something very unsettling about this mustache. And Bud says it just catches the cocaine, which he's absolutely right. Uh, Tonight's forecast, blurries. And Allie just says, oof. She must like it. (laughs) Moving on. Jake and Violet. This is a two for one right here, Blake. I had Violet on the uh, cover art for the whole week. Uh, you guys can chat it up in the, uh, the the chat. What do you think about Violet's hair? Is it punk rocker hair? It does she look better if she just chooses a color? As Dennis as Dennis Leary would say, you look like a couch. Um, but my man on the left here, Jake. I didn't mean it, Blake. Whenever he tries to go for it with that ginger, and she uh, turns him down for the popcorn, he sort of yeah. got like a weird hairstyle here, and his shirt don't fit. Yeah, it's awful. As soon as they put Jake in charge, he immediately tries to sleep with two people, and they both turn him down. I hate Jake almost as much as I hate the Jake on Bud's channel. This guy's hair sucks. (laughs) It's curly. It looks like one side is falling out. It's a shit haircut. Uh, Bud is saying thumbs up for Violet. Nick's saying he digs it. And Chris says he needs a pocket protector. He does. Uh, and I, I agree 100% with Blake on the Jake thing. He's a pervert. He deserved to die. Uh, everybody always says Violet is really pretty until you realize in some of these scenes that she weighs as much as me. Blake, our boy, Jet Vanian, is in the chat. He's been a channel member, Blake, for a year. This guy's great. At least I think it's a year. Close to a year. It's close enough that uh, we're going to say he's been here a year. Thank you, Jed. Where the hell have you been? Blake, I also told everybody that me and you, 
because everybody's talking about Friday the 13th, part four, the 40th anniversary, that me and you are talking about getting up at 5 a.m. and doing a watch along on Rumble with the movie playing. Oh, so we'll be back in five hours? In five hours. Well, look, I don't know if you'll be able to pull it off at this point. I mean, are you, where are you, you going to do it at? I'm going to have to do it in the garage. That's going to be awesome at five o'clock in the morning, Blake. Yeah. Fantastic. What are you talking about? Who's coming to your wedding? We can't come all the way up there. We don't have any money. Are, Pay for are coming to my wedding? Play, uh, Blake, uh, tell him. We'll start negotiating a deal with Fantasy in private. He's got to pay for our, our first class plane tickets to come up there and we'll show up. Oh, we'll take the train. <laughs> Not taking the train. All right. So pretty much a thumbs down from everybody right there. Moving into part six, Blake, we've got Cord Andrews. I chose these two particular pictures because he looks like a chick, Blake. This is not good hair uh, for 1986. Whoa. Uh, look, I'm just going to say it. It's not good hair. Look at that picture on the right. I mean, he would fit in 2024, but in the 80s, he would have got his ass kicked all the time. This is not good hair. This is a thumbs down for me. Uh, I'm glad he got killed. I only I wish. Think, I, see, I think you're way. I think you're way off on this, Ronnie. I think you're way off on this. This is a great head of hair, and it does fit in the 80s, and it does fit now. There's a reason. What's what's happening in that left picture? There's a reason why that's happening, and hair is part of it. I don't know. Hoops is saying uh, the real question: Who wore it better, Shelly or Ethel? I didn't put Ethel on here because I see the Ethel hair all the time. Every every wo old woman in our area has uh, Ethel hair. Nick Push brings up a point that's not driven home enough. That's Travolta's nephew, and he looks exactly like. Uh, Travolta uh, is that Travolta's mom or aunt? That's the mother in Charles in charge. I can't remember. Uh, Chris says it's terrible because it's too much hair. <laughs> and Fantasy says in Philadelphia, <laughs> that head be going in the shitter. <laughs> 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 oh man <laughs> that head be going in the shitter in school. <laughs> oh man I've seen it happen oh in the stream I can't think <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of bullying. So. <laughs> it made this country great. Moving on. Uh, Chris is saying it's actually Travolta's sister that's in Charles in Charge, I'm guessing. the uh, Scott Bayo's mom in Charles in Charge. Yeah. Nick Push says he loves the overtired portion of these streams. What does that even mean? Is he insulting us? I don't know. He needs to go to bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Chris is saying Ellen Travolta is John Travolta. Yeah. See, I, I love Charles in Charge. It's a great show. Underrated. Oh, here's Bud coming in with another great take. Nobody cares about Charles in Charge. Uh, Bud's just trying to be controversial at this point, right, Blake? Is he starting he's a new gimmick? He, he's trying to get under our skin. Uh, he's turned heel. I don't know if he was unhappy with WrestleMania or what, but he has turned heel on us for sure. He turned heel on Darren and Frank by stealing their idea for next week, too. I just don't know what's going on. Here we go. Moving on to the next one, Blake. The little boy from Friday the 13th, Part 6, that says uh, we're in deep crap or whatever. Dead meat. That's what he said. The only reason I added it is because he's apparently turned into like a little alien looking creep there to the right. So I had to add him. Yeah. The 80s hair that he had was great. I, I had that hair. But on the right, definite pedophile, allegedly, I think. So looks like a weirdo. I hope he's not sick or nothing because I'm going to feel bad for saying he looks like a weirdo. But what do you think, Blake? Yeah, he's a total weirdo. I don't give a shit if he's sick or not. Uh, you could have done something else. Um, yeah, life's been rough on him. Oh, Blake, here, look at this. Fantasy's back, and he said he played blackjack with Scott Bayo. 
I mean, he's done it all, Ronnie. He do, he's done it all. He's in concerts every other week. He's been in bands. He's getting married. He's flushing people down the damn toilet, and he's playing <laughs> cards with, uh, with Jim Charles Bob's the best. Jones. Jim Bob's the best. <laughs> oh, mo- <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. Stan and Larry, the first gay couple potentially in the Friday the 13th series. Uh, it hasn't been confirmed. Uh, their hair is terrible. That is just pure uh, shit on the left, Blake. There's no hairline there. It's like he started growing it from the back of his head so he could flip it over the top. And Larry over here, uh, he's hanging on to this partial widow's peak, but uh, awful, terrible, much, much, terrible, terrible, terrible. I got a better question for you, Ronnie. Yeah. Trish and Tommy's mom or her in the middle? Trish and Tommy's mom. Okay. That's a ugly uh, insert predator clip right here. That is an ugly human being right here in the middle. These are three uh-huh. ugly human beings. Phil the Screams podcast has showed up late, Blake. I'm this close to throwing them out. We're 90 minutes into this stream, and this person pops in and says, Hey, where who's you been? Uh, Ronnie, who's got the wrench in our chat? Nobody. Who is, who is <laughs> We don't have any moderators. We don't have moderators. Well, well, listen, Field, when we get some moderators, your ass is gone. Coming (laughs) in here two hours late. Saying, how you doing? Uh, Chris says the girl in the middle is in Caddyshack. Is that the one that gets naked with Chevy Chase? No, it can't be her. Uh, I'm trying to think who it could be. Blake, I'm going to prepare you for the research that I ran into. And it's kind of creepy. Officer Pappas from Friday 13th, part six. I've always thought when I've watched when I was when, when I was much younger, I always thought that Sheriff Garris looked like a great value Chuck Norris and that Officer Pappas looked like a great value Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. His hair is fantastic fantasy yeah. he's the best uh he wants to know what to do how should i proceed when he's trying to catch megan and tommy but then i kept researching him blake because i wanted to find some better pictures and i found out and everybody in the chat shut up and listen in 1989 he posed for playgirl He's pick? a stud. He's a stud. He was on the cover of Playgirl Blake. He took that picture in the middle where it looks like he's got that wood. You know what he's doing. Yeah, he's gonna start a fire. This is what he looks like all the way to the right to this day. He is still an alpha male. He's still got great hair. Uh, he looks like, uh, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. Hairdo right there in the middle. What was his name? So I don't think there's any other YouTube channel that talks about Friday the 13th that is letting Friday the 13th fans know that Officer Pappas from Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, went on to be on the cover of 1989's Playgirl and to this day is still yoked. So this is our goal, Ronnie. We have connections with Vinny. Yes. First off, we got to order this edition of Playgirl. Yes. We got, we got to do that tonight. Hi, can and you still do that? At it. Yeah, I'm getting it. Aaron Tippin, thanks, Allie. It's Aaron Tippin. <laughs> you fall for anything. Jason Drawn's in the chat. And then we're going to get Vinny to hook us up. And we're going to get him to sign that Playgirl. I don't and know. That's going to be the shit we got in the back of our podcast. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, if Vinny would want me revealing our private email conversations. Because when I found out all this information about this guy, my intent was to immediately email Vinny. And say, why didn't you try to get this yoked up sucker on your sh- on your movie? And then I remembered, oh, he got his head squeezed and killed. But I was like, you could have put him in anything else. 
But all the well, email yeah, read Shelly, was Shelly got killed. <laughs> true. The only thing I ended up doing was sending an email goes, Hey, did you know, officer Pappas was in play girl and he sent back an email that was the quote from office space. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, Fantasy says he's definitely an eighties porn star. Nick push is saying okay. impressive as hell. Let's see. Uh, Fantasy says break out the funky jam band music. Jet Vanian says I sent pics into Playgirl and they didn't have enough paper. Oh, <laughs> uh, Phil the Scream said I had to hold a plank of wood like that to get the perfect profile pic. That's why he was late. That's the only excuse we would take. Uh, Anytime and- you're inside and you got your shirt off, your shoes off, and you still got the jeans on, mm-hmm. on it's go time. But that's Officer Pappas, and I don't care what anybody in the chat says. That's a thumbs up. Hold on, where am I at? Where am I at? That's a thumbs up. That's thumbs up. He may be the best character in the whole franchise, Ronnie. This has totally changed me. <laughs> Mike Garris, the sheriff, he was definitely is it's shades of Seinfeld hair here. It's thinning, but he's he's brushing it back. He he's got it thick in the back the way you like it. He he's owning it, Blake. So there you go. There's no way you should know that name, Chris. Should be I'm you should getting, be ashamed. Uh, stuff. I'm, get, I'm getting David Letterman vibes from from his hair, and I don't like it. Here might be another topic, Blake. How many characters in the Friday the 13th franchise have a damn mustache? Jet Vanian says it's like the different country blues. I mean, there's <laughs> Chris is saying uh, that hair sucks. That hair sucks. It does. <laughs> Moving on. Out of all the hair we've this. seen, this is toward the bottom. All right. So, okay. The only way we can decide is let the people decide. We got like almost 30 people in the chat. You guys give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on Sheriff Garris. Okay. Uh, Allie wants to know how did this guy have a hottie like Megan? Well, it's real simple. Two negatives make a positive. Everybody knows that. Uh, Phil the Scream says kind of has vibes of the tall robber in Home Alone. Daniel Stern? Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Hey, be quiet. (laughs) Moving on, people. Ronnie, Mickey. do you want to meet my dog? Uh, which one are you? Jarvis, come here. Pappas. Get up here. You got to jump. It's a webcam. Yeah, meet Pappas. Hang on. And while he's messing with... We can't see. Look at that. Look at that. That's rim shot. Okay. This is the actual dog from Ernest Goes to Jail. It's rim shot. Fantasy. Wants to know where is his girl from Weird Science? Shit. That is a that's a great that's a (laughs) dude, really? What you like? That's a great question, Fantasy. He wants to know where is the girl from Weird Science from part four? It came to a point when I got to part four that I had so many slides that I just couldn't put people that had the same hair in it. Like right here, the only reason I put Darcy DeMoss in here is what I was hoping somebody would agree with me that this is not a good hairstyle. Look at it on the left. That's not good hair. It don't matter what the hair looks like on the right, but on the left, that's not a good hairstyle. I disagree. I love her. Uh, Can't Buy Me Love is one of my favorite movies. She's hot in that. She's hot in this. This is a good hairstyle for her. Uh, Jim Bob said he lost his virginity behind Lee's famous recipe to a girl with the same haircut. Blake, real what quick. What do they Google's. serve at Lee's famous recipe? <laughs> Apparently. Is it a, bar- is it a barbecue joint? or? Apparently. Uh, our, our special today is Cooter, Ronnie. Chris says he's not a fan of the hair. Nick says she looks like Joe Nancy McKeon from the Facts of Life show. She does look like Joe from the uh, from the Facts of Life. That's that's a good pull. I like that. <laughs> Jim Bob said they serve chicken. 
<laughs> Chicken and ass. <laughs> Moving on. Melissa, we're into part seven now, Blake. Melissa, oh, yeah. everybody likes to, you know, talk about she takes the axe to the face and gets thrown behind the TV. But she also rocks the Prince Valiant haircut. So there you go. I like it. Uh, Nick Push posted a short uh, of her earlier. Y'all need to go check that out. I think she has great hair. Uh, I think she's smoking hot, not talked about enough as far as hottest girls in the franchise, mostly because I hadn't seen Seven in a long time. Uh, the way she gets killed is the famous cover for the Friday the 13th video game. You know, Jason holding the axe. So that's awesome, too. So double points there. I love this Prince Valiant haircut, Ronnie. You can make fun of it all you want. Call it He-Man. I love her. <laughs> He-Man. In the chat, are you loving Melissa's hair or not? Let us know. Uh, Nick Push has been a member, Blake, for one month. And he says, excellent hair, excellent character. So there you go. I one didn't even month, know we could huh? do these. We've known him for yeah. four years. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on so we can get everybody to bed. Amanda Shepard, the LPGA cover girl, Tina's mom, so annoying that her husband had to beat her because she wasn't a listener. Yeah. What do you think about this hair? This is like a she mullet. This is awful hair. This is, uh, there's no excuse for that hairstyle on the right. It's uh, awful. How about this right here, Blake? You want to see somebody try to show up, Nick Push? A member chat from Jet Vanian, who's been a member, Blake, 12 months of supporting all the good names are taken. But the top of her hair looks off. <laughs> <laughs> are you <laughs> mute? I was coughing. I just caught what he was talking about. Pure filth. <laughs> awful. Awful. Phil the Scream says, Awful. Ali says, oh, Lord. Hold on. Uh, Jim Bob says, Masters of the Universe. This hair is terrible. Yeah, uh, it reminds me of, like, Beast from... Uh, Beauty and the Beast, the, not, the series. Yeah, I was going to say X-Men. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is awful. I mean, this is the gayest haircut of the series, and don't freak out. We can say that because our dad is gay. We mentioned Our dad went gay right? after he had kids. Uh, yeah. Chris says she pees standing up. and... I bet she does. She, yeah. She pushes that thing. <laughs> Moving on, people. Blake, look at this haircut. This is Dan Carter from Friday the 13th, Part 7. He's the one that goes to get fired to warm everything up before he tries to uh, have coitus. Look at this. Look I can't at these really bangs. see it. Do you have another picture? No, it's just this. This was the perfect haircut right here. It looks like a billy goat ate his bangs off. Yeah, uh, it's like a straight line straight across. That's never good. Uh, it's thumbs down for me. Blake, how about this? Another flex on Nick Push. Chris Fantazzi, who has been a member for 12 months. That's a year, Blake, of supporting the channel. Said, yes, I did play Blackjack with Scott Bayo, And he said, shut up. <laughs> You think Fantasy was talking to him too much? I think Fantasy would not hush. And he hit him with the shut up. This life vest Dan Carter's got on. Dort thinks he's going to drown. He looks like, uh, what was that Saturday Night Live character, MacGruber? That's it. He does That's like MacGruber. <laughs> MacGruber! Hey, Bud says he still can't figure out how to become a member of this channel. Open your wallet. <laughs> moving on we're into the end of the paramount era friday the 13th part eight we've got charles mccullough hey and the reason i added him blake because this is what i like to call the pitch perfect pencil part okay say that three times real fast the pitch perfect pencil part part because it's perfect and it looks like it was drawn on with a pencil to the point where this might be a toupee i don't know but this hair i'm gonna give it 12 thumbs up i think it's awesome only a boss final boss like the rock 
wears hair like this. Blake. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And like I said, context, man, this guy's in his 60s, possibly 70s, and he's still got that good head of hair. You know, back in the day, this dude was banging. <laughs> Uh, Fantasia wants to know what kind of crews were they on? So there you go. Uh, I think he's trying to say Stanley Spadowski clubhouse. They were on a Ted Cruz. <laughs> Phil just screams said awful character, but great hair, especially for his age. Plus he's got like the Dan Patrick from sports center going on where Dan Patrick, everybody knew his hair was gray, but he kept dying it black and you had that red tint to it. He didn't do what Bruce Campbell does before he goes to all these conventions, which is go by the, uh, the store and get some shoe polish and then brush your hair with it. He actually tried to use actual hair stuff. And that's where you get that red tint. He's not a ginger. He wouldn't live his life like that. It's just he's trying to dye his gray hair, okay? I always got Unsolved Mystery vibes from this guy. Update. Moving on. Wayne. He should have went with the rocker, Blake. And his hair's amazing. He should have. He turned down a sure thing. Uh, but you got to listen. Who, who was it, Ronnie, that told us uh, shoot for the moon? If you miss, you land among the stars or something like that. That's that fat ass jumping Joey that eats Joey's roll <laughs> tour. He was going for the hottest chick on the boat, you know, and who knows if it didn't work out, maybe he would have ended up with rock chick, but you're right. He should have said yes immediately. And, uh, they could have made sweet, sweet music videos the whole time. Uh, Jim Bob says it looks like Velma. Bud said it looks <laughs> like Tom Brady. It's effing Velma from Scooby. We do. <laughs> and Jet Vanian says the super kick is the worst finisher. Obviously, Jet Vanian didn't grow up when Shawn Michaels was knocking fools out left and right. And Chris says what about, that's uh, awful. Chris, uh, Chris Adams? I was about to say, what about Gentleman Chris Adams, Ronnie? <laughs> gentleman Chris Adams was knocking people out left and right, too. All right, moving on. We've got the street toughs, Blake. We've got multiple people here. I just wanted to I'm add it because included, that I, I, I'm glad you included these guys. I, I don't think there's a miss in here, Ronnie. I think it's all, I think it's four good looks that suit each character. Yeah, the one to the far right's got Wee Man's haircut. So there you go. Yeah. I like it. I, I agree with you uh, on this. I think all, these are four thumbs up for me. So there you go. Just keep on rolling, like Alabama said. Here is young Jason Blake uh, from Friday 13th, part eight. So he's got, <laughs> uh, you can barely see the top picture to the left, but my favorite is the one in the middle there where he's sort of like got the pose that your young son had at Disney world. <laughs> oh yeah. And then for some reason, Jason in Friday 13th part eight started looking like that thing that's riding the bicycle in, uh, mouth of madness. Right. And Nick push is being racist in the chat. He says he's more Asian than Kelly. Who? Who? Exactly. Moving on Blake Friday, the 13th. I, well, I'm not supposed to say that Jason goes to hell Friday, the 13th part nine. We've got Jason. The movie opens. Jason's after Denise. Say goodnight, Denise. And we've got these strands of hair here, Blake. I just picture him at night. I know Vinny likes to say that Jason goes and just sits and stares at a tree like Putty. But I like to picture him like sitting somewhere, like straightening this hair out with like a brush. It's like it's going to look pretty. Yeah. Now, if you say Friday 13th, it's like three through eight doesn't exist. And it ends with Mountain Man, you know, coming through the window with that hair. And then we cut to this. Like, it would make sense, you know. But, uh, yeah, this is not a good look for Jason. Uh, uh, not just his hair, but just for Jason in general. From top to bottom, it's not a good look. Chat's getting out of control. Uh, Nick Push with the Asian joke and Jim Bob going, now we know why he ate the dog in part two. Yeah, this is terrible. I've, I, I don't know if I answered this earlier in the stream two days ago when we started, but I said I prefer my Jason bald. I don't like any hair. I don't like when he looks like Bob Maluga Luga Luga in Friday 13th Part 2. No hair, okay? Uh, Davey's saying it looks like D. Snyder's hair. Yeah, Ernie McCracken. 
<laughs> Kentucky. I feel the screams is saying Jason's hair is pretty inconsistent. No shit. All right, moving on. Here we go. Good point. Yeah. I mean, it's not the same in every movie. Joey Blake Ooh. from the diner. She's a handful. Yes, she is. Cinnamon muff. <laughs> if you look to the right right there, she's got like a Whoville thing going where it's like circled up right here in the front. I don't understand exactly what's going on right there. Guys in the chat, thumbs up or thumbs down on Joey's hair. Now, let's take into account that Joey does look like a man. All right. Let's we're not gonna we're not here to judge the way she looks. We're here to judge her hair. So is her hair good? I know the mirror rings are awesome. And the collar that's uh, yellow over the blue, awesome as well. Uh, Blake, uh, they are hammering out, out Joey. Of all the, out of all the guys in our chat, which one do you think would bed down Joey? Great question. Uh, Bud, Nick Push, uh, Jim Bob, Jet Vanian, uh, Chris, uh, <laughs> Mark Mack. Uh, Mark Mack is definitely here. So he would do it. Uh, Phil the screams would bed her down. Uh, who else we got? Let's see. Davy death Ray would do it. A fantasy would marry her if she had money. Uh, let's keep rolling up. Let's see. That's all we got in the chat. Blake, everybody pretty much would do it. That's all I know. <laughs> fantasy says enough Coke. He would. I, I had to get back of the line. No, Hoops Hooper Ray. Hoops Hooper Ray's in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He went with the emoji. <laughs> Jim Bob says that's a three bagger. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to put what Chris just put. Nick put, sure, why not? Phil the Scream said, of course, because of free food. I forgot Jason Drawn was in the chat. He would definitely. I look that dude. He definitely would. He says when I draw Elvis, that's the hair. Basically, I charge her, but let's see. Basically, I charge her, <laughs> but I would better down. So there we go. <laughs> charge her for some hamburgers. Everyone, great. Of <laughs> Chris, not my worst Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> These are the filthiest human beings, and somehow they found our way into our channel. Yeah. Look at this. I can't even read that. <laughs> Moving on, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't stop looking at the chat now. Sadly, that's it. Okay. That's great. it. Sadly, we're done. Blake's freezing in the chat. Uh, I don't know if we set a new record tonight or not. We're at 31 people right now. Uh, first off. Let's uh, just say we on. did. Who, I mean, who keeps up with it? Like WWE, every week we say we set a new record. Yeah. I like that gimmick. Blake, Davey Deathray says his wife wants to know where you're at. Uh, what? What? Say that again. Uh, Davey Death. Well, hold on. I can't do it. Davy Deathray wants he says his wife wants to know where you're at. I tell her I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Chris says this is another show for the books. Uh everybody, we're sorry we were late. We're gonna get the tech issues. Uh we'll get it. For everybody that donated tonight. I, I was so excited to start tonight too, because this is a brand that this is a brand new setup. Like brand new laptop, I got everything plugged in. It's still not working. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was watching you on this screen, and I wanted to like. I was like, this guy, this poor guy, this poor guy. And then I was like, he's not going to be here. I'm going to have to do this whole freaking thing by myself. Uh, hey, wait a minute. You re look at this, Blake. Nick coming through. Can we get an encore? Unbelievable, Shit. Nick. Nick. You are a channel member, buddy. Thank you for donating. And when I say don't do it anymore, I really want you to keep doing it, but more, okay? So 
for Nick, and because Blake's freezing, let, we're going to give you a couple of different <laughs> things, Nick. Let's go. Wiping just my ass because, I mean, I can't reach everything on my back and I can't reach everything below me. So, you know, it's whatever. Just lean forward. Don't lean back. Lean forward. You ready? You ready? Push. Push. You ready? Oh, you got that big Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, he's going to split. Somebody say, hey, we want some. Monday, Monday, Monday. Anyway, thank you to everybody that donated tonight. Blake, thumbs up or thumbs down. Are we going to try to do the Rumble Friday the 13th Part 4 review in the morning? Now, obviously, nobody's going to be there but me and you. Are you up for it? What time in the morning? Well, what time did you say? You were a tough guy earlier. You said 5 o'clock. Well, yeah, I just got to find out what time I got to take my son to to take the act all right so so if we watch the movie at five it'll be over at six thirty. yeah all right let's do it i asked harper if he wanted to join in because believe it or not people harper thinks we're keeping him away from everybody because he's too popular i was like hey you have no interest in jumping up in the morning and doing a watch along do you and he goes no I don't. Uh, Davey, it's going to be 5 a.m. Central time, 6 a.m. Eastern. Unless we sleep over. You never know. Oh, okay. Here we go, Blake. Nick Push says, no way this happens. Fantastic. still talking about rock, rocking the cocaine. It's going to, what, if I, what if I come on here and do it myself? So, guys, here's what's going to happen in That'd the morning. That'd be great. I, I'd enjoy that. I'll post the Rumble link to the Instagram. I'll post the Rumble link to a post on, uh, is it YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. And you guys can join us, or you can wait for the edited version. Or it might be a situation where we oversleep, and I'm doing it like at 8 o'clock, and, and Blake's nowhere to be found. Uh, Nick Push says he's only waking up if it's Taco T or Taco Saturday, and it's coming. Uh, anyway, we got to go guys. My brother's outside and, uh, he's freezing to death because it is kind of cool here. So really quickly, Blake, I had some of these Peter North polls that I forgot to put up tonight. Like this one right here that said best looking guy in Friday the 13th part one. And you can't say Kevin Bacon. Who do you think it was? Steve Christie. Oh, hi, I'm Steve Christie. What are you doing out in this mess? Okay, the second question I had that I forgot, and since I did it, I'm, I'm going to put it up. Hold on, where's that? It ain't working. Some bitch ain't starting. All right, this one says, would you date Shelly? Explain why or why not. We already discussed that in the chat because of the cake. This one right here says, is part five <laughs> where they're staying the halfway house? Is an insane asylum? All right. Uh, and then in part, the last question I had for the night says, what does Tommy do for a living? And Jason lives, does he have a job? What's going on? Davey says it's the motorbike cop in part one. Uh, Crispin Glover wins part two. I don't even know what you're talking about. And <laughs> all right, we're ending it. We're talking about ropes at this point, Blake. All right, guys, we'll see you in the morning or we won't. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting the channel. Blake, I love you. We'll see you guys you, this week.